All right, hi there, Patreons, and welcome to the Blood Reaper tutorial on painting leather belts. So you guys have really been requesting a lot of uh, you know content on how to paint leather, and so I'm really trying to follow through. Starting off with a base coat of Hull Red and Nightshade Purple, about 50-50 here, and then we're gonna start off by layering on some of this Kalahari Orange. We're gonna be using the Broken Toad size zero. This is a nice uh, brush for this, especially because it's, it's just a touch thinner, um, and it, that, that lets us get these smaller, more precise lines uh, the downside is that it, it makes it difficult and we have to reload the brush much more often. That's why Windsor Newtons are really great. They have a great body. So I was just thinning the paint down there just to kind of get it uh, essentially to a consistency where it's going to be thin enough to come off of the brush uh, without too much difficulty, but also thick enough that it's actually going to cover qu uh, quite well because these first phases essentially we're trying to build uh, a little bit more of a major contrast between you know, where the leather's cracking and where it's aging and also, uh, you know, the, the original kind of shiny, uh, you know, leather surface. So, and here we're doing it on, you know, kind of a difficult part. I wanted to show you this, kind of how I hold the miniature and how I'm still trying to apply those straight lines. And some of them are gonna go all the way across the belt and you'll see this pattern be repeated where, you know, with some of them we're kind of going partially into the belt, other ones we're going all the way across. Uh, in, you'll notice on you know belts in real life that the parts that are flexed much more often or much more frequently, they tend to have cracks that will go all the way across the surface, um, especially if they're being bent in a, a little bit more of an extreme fashion uh, or they're just getting a lot of use. So um, this is also another fun little technique. If the brush splays, it's actually not too bad of a thing. Again, the difficulty is the paint will dry faster, but you get a more interesting pattern. Here we have Mars Orange. This is going to be the next color that we are going to move up to and we're trying to be more even more precise here with how we are applying it because uh, you know essentially we are wanting to build layers we we don't want to erase the work that we did previously uh, we want those layers to kind of push through and all of this is kind of in service of creating an old worn leather belt while I'm continuing to work on this uh, essentially something to think about uh, with leather and I get a lot of questions is what colors do I use for leather um, the best thing that I can really recommend is looking at reference photos of not only like leather coats and leather belts, but um, just a, a variety of surfaces. Um, you'll find that there's actually a lot of colors. The the belt surfaces that you know are kind of up on his shoulders are a little bit more like a yellow green. Uh, that that's another combination that works really really well. But uh, leather can be dyed and tinted, and um, there's quite a variety of tones and colors. Again, very, very similar to the pattern that we did previously. Uh, not too much difference here. Um, on this bottom side, we're not really going all the way across. We're just kind of touching it up here and there. We can come back in if we forgot some of it. It's entirely up to you. Now we are going to be using Olive Skin. Uh, this is a tone that we used in the wood uh, painting tutorial as well. It's a really, really great diverse color. It's just a nice khaki color. And um, it's it's a great brown as well because it feels like it has a little bit of each of the primaries, and so we can kind of force it and you know bend it to our needs where we need to. If we need it to be warm, we can make it warm. If we need it to be cool, we can make it cool. Um, and again, just still using the size uh, Windsor Newton size zero, but you'll see that the the amount of area that we're touching with the brush keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We want to keep that kind of orange, you know, that orange coloring and orange flavor to it. But uh, again, looking at reference, if you look up reference, a lot of fresh cracks in a leather uh, belt or, you know, any kind of leather material tend to be uh, a little bit tan or a little bit in this tan color range. They also tend to be kind of uh, fuzzy or and it's because, uh, you know, leather and the, the skin is kind of made of fibers and when you rip them apart, you kind of get that that fuzzy texture. And 
and we are just continuing this pattern all the way around yet again. This is really, really great practice for brush control because you have to really focus on what you're doing. Just showing the belt there after that round. Now we're going to be using Iroko from Scale Color, and uh, you've probably noticed at this point that we are using a lot of Scale 75 and Reaper colors. Um, the, the, there is a particular reason behind that, and that particular reason is that those colors are much more matte. Um, and again, this is a, a reference kind of thing and also a thing just to kind of look at leather in real life. And what you'll notice is that new leather or for, you know kind of clean leather, uh, it, it, especially like leather shoes, for instance, they tend to be very, very shiny um, and very, you know, you can polish leather and, you know, you can really make it look very pretty. The reason that we're using matte colors in this manner is that uh, essentially when leather cracks and when it does, you know, that, that aging process, it tends to become much more matte and much more fuzzy and uh, worn and so on and so forth. And so um, with that being said, you know, we want to use these matte colors and we want to have that textural contrast uh, to the shiny, you know, Vallejo base coat. And um, this is kind of like we, we've talked about textural contrast before, and this is um, kind of an inverse way of doing it where uh, in the shadows, it's shiny and in the uh, you know, the highlights, it's matte and textured. And so um, you can do that the other way around as well, where you have it, you know, you have the surface be matte and you have shiny shadows. Um, it works very well if you want to make something look dark and ominous. And so here we have Dale Rowney Antelope Brown ink from the Dale Rowney FW ink series, and we have it on the palette here. Uh, we're going to thin it down quite a bit and just kind of trying to figure out where to put it there on the palette. Um, but yeah, we really do want this to be quite thin. Uh, we talked about this in the wood painting tutorial where uh, it's better to do multiple thin coats and have that level of control that we're looking for than to be too bold with it and to kind of, uh, like what I said before, erase or you know remove some of the work that we were doing previously. And just very, very carefully applying it, uh, tinting it. You can tell that you know it's it's not uh, pooling up anywhere. If it does pool up anywhere, uh, just be aware of that and try to soak it up. You can see me doing that right there. All right, and now we're coming back with the tanned flesh here, and you know, essentially, when we when we put that uh, that ink on, it does make it just a touch more shiny, and so we're again coming back with the Reaper tone here, and we'll probably come uh, we're coming back with the Reaper tone here just so that we can make this surface a, a bit more matte, and we're also grabbing some of that Iroko. Of course, Scale seventy five is much more matte than Reaper, touching the edges. Even if we do apply an ink to a matte paint, it's still going to remain relatively satin or matte. Um, it's not going to be completely matte the way that it was before, but it still will maintain a lot of those properties. And it's because, it, you know, matte paint, uh, if you look at it at a near microscopic level, it does still have that kind of fuzzy or textured surface. And it tends to bounce light around within itself quite a lot more. And that's why it's more matte. And, you know, even if we glaze over it, it's going to maintain some of those properties. It'd be like if you put like, baking soda into uh, uh, heavy grit sandpaper like the those grits are still gonna be sticking out essentially again just being very very careful here
So there you guys go. That is the belt. It is all finished up. I really hope that you like the final product. Um, you know, please take this technique and play around with it. Play around with colors. Um, don't forget to go online and look at, uh, you know, real reference images because those are really going to help you guys out. Um, and then once again, thank you so much for your support. Uh, I know this time has been kind of crazy and the video releases have not been as frequent as I want them to. And, uh, you know, with, with baby Theo on the way, you know, the video releases are probably going to uh, come down to one or two a month, but I'm really going to try to up that production quality for you guys. And, uh, you know, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and happy painting. Bye.